The Ontario experience is the next best thing to going on the adventure yourself. And who knows, this unique show just might give you some ideas for your next fishing or hunting trip. Like we're back at Cat Island and glad to be back here. We caught so many trout, so many big trout. This lake is amazing when it comes to lake trout. And you know what? The walleye fishing comes easy too. So you, if the walleyes are mixed in with the lake trout, we went and fished walleyes in the shallows and caught a bunch there too. So little trout up here at Cat Island Lodge is just simply an amazing lake. There's one. <laughs> that didn't take long. We just got here to Cat Island and decided to start off with walleyes. This lake has got both lake trout and walleyes. Ooh, there's a nice walleye. Ooh. Here we go. That's a good start, Bear. Yes, it is. Here we go. That's a good start to the day. Good start to the trip, Cat Island Lodge. Again, we're starting with walleyes this time. Last time, we, we've been here before, and last time we started with lake trout. Now you may be wondering, why are you using such a big bait for, for walleyes? Well, guess what, walleyes eat them. But there's also lake trout in the same area. Pretty much everywhere you go out here, this time of year, we're out here in the fall, and the walleyes are starting to transition deep, and the lake trout are starting to transition shallow, and they are mixed together. So I'm using bigger baits for both walleyes because there are lake trout mixed in. So and you're going to catch both of them, obviously. Look at that. That's a nice eater size walleye. And we're going to, we're going to have a little short lunch first day here at Cat Island Lodge, too. So this has been a great start. First spot, already tagged into a walleye. So this is going to be a great trip. Got some juice to that one. Bigger walleye, I think. Bigger walleye. Wow. Get those big head shakes. Oh, I got a real nice walleye. Oh, come here, bear. There we go. Ah. What a release fish, huh? Yeah. Well, actually, it's a pretty walleyes. good size. Pretty Ontario walleyes. You, know, you come up here, we're in the fall. We're just gonna we're gonna go through a lot of walleyes. And you talk about cold fronts in the fall, it's not nearly as drastic as a cold front in the middle of summer. And really when you come when you're talking about Canada, I've gone through a lot of cold fronts up here all season long and it just doesn't seem to affect these fish nearly like it does back in the States for whatever reason. So we went from about 75 degrees yesterday and this morning I think it was like 41 degrees and uh, Apparently it didn't seem to affect these fish because we're on top of them and we're just crushing these walleyes ready today. It's going to be a fun day of walleye fishing. This is a heavy fish. They never Still heavy? No. Just nope. not the just not the one. Not it. That one's still down there. This one's lighter. That other one I missed was a lot heavier than this one. Ooh. Ooh. There we go. There's on fire with the jig and minnow. Nice fish. It's got the jig and minnow working. You know, there's times where artificial baits will definitely, no question about it, outfish live bait. But right now, he's starting to put out a clinic with the jig and a minnow, which, you know, we're talking about Canadian fishing. 
I bet you there's more walleyes caught on a jig than any other bait, probably combined, so that's pretty impressive. There she goes. There we go. <laughs> oh, we got a double bear. <laughs> no, bear screwed it up. <laughs> I tell you what, I mean, if you were to ask me, what's a decent wall right there, bear? Oh, there we go. As I was saying, if you were to ask me, what is my favorite time to be up in Ontario? I would say fall. And we were up here in late September to first part of October. And the fishing is just always fantastic. I mean, the reason being is these fish are, whether it be walleyes or lake trout or whatever it may be, pike, muskie, they have their feed bags on getting ready for winter. So even when you're talking about cold front fishing, it doesn't affect the fishing. The fishing is still fantastic. It just, like I said, they got the feed bags on, they're loading up for winter, and they just flat out bite. They bite on soft plastics, they bite on jig and minnow, they bite on crankbaits, it doesn't really matter. The fish just bite. And it's just a wonderful time to be up in Ontario. Well, this lake is just ultra healthy. The fish are just fat, they're eating well. There's just a lot of forage. You can actually see on the, the hummingbird that we're going over a lot of bait fish. And the walleyes aren't too far underneath them, but they're on the, seems to be on the down side of this break. So like 28 to 30 feet. Seems like we're getting most of these walleyes. So, and it's just really super subtle. Like this rod I'm using is a seven foot medium fast and you're just dropping it back and you can watch your line jump. Yeah, but you feel it all the way through this rod because these rods, these synchro rods are so, oh, just like I just said, that one feels nice. Awesome. I just, he just picked it up, but I felt it all the way to, to the handle just because the sensitivity of these rods are just so fantastic. But the action is just like what it's, where it's at. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> that, now we're talking heavy fish. Again, it's just so such a subtle bite. There we go. Now we're talking. The wallers are getting better. They're getting bigger. Like I was saying, just an absolutely amazing subtle bite we got going on right here. But when I set the hook, I knew it was definitely a bigger fish. But look at the gut on that thing, the belly, they are just absolutely feeding. Fall feeding, it's that time of year. This is a beautiful fish. We're gonna get a, get a quick photo, we're gonna release it. Oh, guess what? <laughs> I, I got one. Barry had one on, a beautiful fish. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. I think we, I think we. That's what? Oh, you know what happened? Oh, you wait, to, wait till you see this. You are not going to believe this. <laughs> Bear had a nice fish on. He was fighting it. And I still had my line on. I was hoping to get a double on him. He broke his line. Guess what I did? My line got wrapped around his line. See, that's his jig right there. <laughs> and I ended up catching this fish by getting tangled up with Bear's broken line. <laughs> now that's teamwork. But look at the size of that fish bear. That's big. It's half yours yep. and half mine. <laughs> That's teamwork, buddy. Yes, it is. Wow, that is a dandy fish. But isn't that crazy? Look at that thing. It just barely got wrapped around his hook, my line did. Just one little twist around, around, that, around that jig. That's all it took. <laughs> and I pulled in the rest of the way. Wow, I mean, look at the, look at the girth on that fish. That is crazy. <laughs> That's definitely the biggest fish of the day. No question about it. Beautiful Ontario walleye. Beautiful Cat Island Lodge walleye right there. Tough to beat. Bear was saying uh, he had a guy up here he was guiding about a week ago and he pulled in a 28 inch walleye out of the same exact spot. And the guy was so pumped he was jumping up and down. And, you know, that's why you come up here. You get excited about catching big fish. You get excited about catching lots of fish. Oh, 
I was just talking earlier about the power. Well, this is a medium power rod, and the action, some extra uh, fast action. It's just a, it's a perfect setup for what we're doing because of what the fish are doing. They're just the the bite is so light. They're just picking it up. But with that action, you can feel it. Oh, it's another big walleye. Jeez. <laughs> just another really, really nice walleye. They just keep getting better. You know, we're trying to catch a couple more for shore lunch, and we just keep catching these really nice 22 inch walleyes, which are great to throw back and catch again down in the future. But, uh, you know, I was talking about, let me re release this fish real quick and talk about my rod again, real quick. There she goes. Some way to fight another day. You know, let me finish what I was saying about my rod, the rod I'm using. It's a, I like using a, a longer rod. This is a seven foot medium fast action. So the, the important part about this, what, with what we're doing, what's going on with the bite is that it's a real subtle bite like I was saying before. So you need a really sensitive tip. So this has got a fast action tip. So the action is super important when these fish are really light biters. They're just picking, picking that jig off the bottom. And you can feel this rod, you can feel every little bump on your jig. You can feel every little rock that the, your jig hits. And when that fish picks it up, you can feel that. And then you set the hook. A lot of times when you drop your line, you've got a little bit of slack. And that's why that longer rod, the seven foot rod really comes into play. You can pick up a lot of that slack in the line and, and, and get a good hook set into the mouth of that fish. Now the power is, is important too, because you want to get a good hook set on that fish as well. Drive that hook into their mouth. So uh, for me, when you're using jigs this time of year, especially when the fish are a little bit more lethargic, they're, kicking, they're, they're, they're biting the jig, but they're really lightly biting it. They're just picking up, sucking it in. A seven foot medium fast action rod is super ideal for that situation. <laughs> nice little catch of walleyes. Hey, have you ever come home from fishing and you take your fish out of the live well and you put them in a bucket or a net and you come up to, to clean them and not only are they wet obviously from being in the live well but they're extremely slimy and it just makes for an extremely messy flaying job. Or maybe you've been fishing all day or late into the night and you're super tired and you're just like man I do not want to clean these fish I'm so tired. Well I'm going to show you a tip that will not only alleviate some of that mess when you're flaying these fish but maybe allow you to get a little more sleep before you go to work the next day. So basically, you got these, you got old newspapers, right? You don't know what to do with them. This is another uh, a use for, for old newspapers or those flyers that you get in the mail. What I do is I just take these newspapers and I double wrap these walleyes. And all you do is you take them and you, you put this out and you just grab a walleye and all you're doing is you're wrapping it basically like a sub sandwich. Super easy. Wrap it up. If you're making subs, you'd know exactly what I'm doing here. It's no different. I'm going to take all these fish, wrap them in newspaper, and basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to take them and put them in the refrigerator for probably four or five hours. Or, again, if you have to work next day, I've got up the next morning and I've cleaned them before work or even after work. It's not going to decrease the, the quality of the meat of this fish. And actually, if you forget to bleed these fish, another benefit is some of that some or most of that blood will actually come off the meat, kind of like bleeding them in your live well. So after you pulled your fish out of the fridge after being in there for a number of hours, the whole purpose of the, the again, the newspaper is to draw all that moisture and the slime off the fish. As you can see, that's exactly what we did. These fish are really dry and there is no slime on them. Yeah, you might have a little bit of newspaper that you're gonna flay that skin right off there anyway. So you just take that paper off there and you just throw it away. Super easy. Then all you have to do is flay it like normal. So it's, there's nothing different when it comes to flaying after you're done, except the fact that you don't have all the moisture, all the slime and all the mess. And another benefit, like I was saying before, is you're probably not going to have nearly the blood on the meat. You will have some. I didn't bleed these out like I normally do, just wanted to show 
the meat after I was done. There is some meat, some blood on it, but for the most part, there typically would be a lot more than that. So as you can see, there is a heck of a lot less mess after you flay these fish. It's, a it's just a big, big difference. So, I mean, I'd give it a try. It's just another way to help make a little less mess when you're flaying fish. And by putting them in the fridge and doing it the next day, you might uh, be able to catch up on a little bit of sleep after a long day on the water or a late night fishing. There we go. <laughs> soft plastics. Like I said, once you find them, switch to soft plastics. <laughs> like I said, once you find them fish, switch to soft plastics, and you're definitely going to catch as many, typically, if not more. And sometimes you might catch some bigger fish like this one. This was a dandy walleye. This is going to be a release fish here. This is about a 22 incher. But he slammed to just a drop, or a jig and slow drop, jig and slow drop, and they're just, you can film, snap it, and you watch your line jump. It's an extremely effective way to catch walleyes up here in Ontario, or pretty much anywhere. Nice, we get a, let her go, catch some more bear. Man, that's a bear claw. I might have, I got another one down, there's another one down there. Oh, there's one on the bottom. There. No, look at this one coming up, here he comes. He's chasing me, look at, he's chasing me. No, he went down. Big one, bear? I'm going to get close. <coughs> I'm playing with one over here and he's got one on. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. There we go. Nice one. Nice job. I'm over here playing with one over here trying to net his, his fish. One hits mine. I'm trying to hold the net. He grabbed it. It's just like an absolute circus over here. When it's, when it's fun, it's absolutely fun. When you're talking about lake trout fishing, isn't it, Bear? Yes, it is. It's a decent one. That's a nice fish. The wind actually has died down. It's, it's allowed us to stay right over the top of these schools, and it's been very effective. Because we're just jigging right on the top of them, and they, they, they're chasing the bait. So we're dropping and, and, or reeling up, and that's when they seem to be hitting, not necessarily on the, on, when we're jigging. It's on the retrieve. Try to pull it away from them and they don't like that, they go after and bite it, don't they, Bear? Yes, they do. Perfect, nice fish. There it goes. There you go, on the way up. That's a laker. <laughs> huh? I got it. <laughs> fold it up. I watch him fold it up. Might be oh, a good one. That's a nice oh, one. Oh yeah. Too. Oh yeah. I still have him. I still got him. I still got him. Up. That time I got him. No. <laughs> He's squawking. That's a beautiful fish, bud. Nice fat one. Holy cow. Look at the fat so. Look at that fat so. Big old trout, huh? They're coming in. They're getting ready to spawn, aren't they? Yes, they are. We're talking early October, late September, early October. They start moving into the shells, get ready to spawn. That's a big old tubber there. It's been another great trip here to Cat Island Lodge. We were here a few years ago and we got into just a ton of these things. This time we said, you know what? Let's go after a bunch of walleyes this time. Let's make walleyes a 
uh, the the focus of this trip, and we did that. We caught it just an absolute ton of walleyes. Yes, we did. And we got we got our fill of that, and said, well, let's go after a few lake truck because they really really fight. They are super strong fish. Look at that. What a beautiful fish. Great way to end the trip. If you want to come up here and catch just a ton of walleyes and a ton of lake trout, Cat Island Lodge is the place to come.